I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, hard talk with a matrix of newsmakers. The headlines. The murder of charismatic Russian opposition leader Boris Nemtsov near the Kremlin has plunged the country into mourning, accusations, and counter-accusations. Who was behind the killing of yet another Putin critic? Investigators raise the possibility of radicals in the opposition aiming to stir unrest. Some blame the government. A critic of the Ukrainian conflict, Nemtsov was about to lead a demonstration against Russia's alleged links to rebels there. President Putin promises a full investigation. How should Europe respond? Wary of his crackdown on the opposition, yet dependent on Russia for about 30% of its gas. Now wired into this edition of the network here in the European Parliament in Brussels, Elmar Brock, he's a German member of the Parliament, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee and a member of the center-right EPP group. Gilbert Doktorov, founder of the American Committee for East-West Accord, a pro-Russian organization. I must note that the Russian ambassador declined our invitation. Fraser Cameron, director of the EU-Russia Center, a Western-leaning organization promoting closer ties. Welcome to all of you. First question uh, to Mr. Bok and to all of you. Uh, what, who do you think was behind the murder of Mr. Nemtsov? I think we will never find out because in every question when uh, leaders of the opposition were killed, were attacked, no, never, no, never it was found out in Russia. Because so you don't have no, any faith in the investigation? I have no faith in the investigation at all because we have experience in that since 10 years. Mr. Uh, Doctor. Yes. Mr. Dr. O. I find that a very optimistic statement because uh, immediately after Nemtsov's assassination, uh, the press was rife with the notion that the Kremlin was responsible. The background of, of, um, of the Kremlin in all of the photo shots said it without text. Fortunately, we're past that. The peak is gone. We're on to we don't know. Well, Mr. Cameron, what's your take on it? The system killed Boris Nemtsev. Quite simply, Putin has created a system where the security forces exactly. operate with impunity. And we've seen that in the murders of Anna Politskakaya, Sergei Magnitsky, and many others. It's the system that did the job. Russian investigators are suggesting that it was a possible plot within the opposition to stir further unrest. Do you see that as a possibility, Gilbert? I don't believe that's operative, though the unscrupulousness of Mr. Nemtsov's partners is clear as day. Uh, that they are murderers, I think, is a step way too far. So, Elmar, is there, is there any chance it could be within the opposition doing that? I think that this Putin system has created an atmosphere where opposition leaders have no chance and that such victims are victims of that system. And now to say that the opposition himself is responsible for that, it's incredible, sir. Okay, Mr. Nemtsov was about to lead a major demonstration opposing the conflict in Ukraine and Russia's alleged support of the rebels. Will his murder silence the opposition on this, on this conflict? Well, the, the opposition only have limited means to put their case. They're not allowed on state television, for example, so they have to operate through the Internet and very small number of radio channels. But I think the murder of Nemtsov will increase the opposition to what Russia is doing in Ukraine. Gilbert, how do, you, how do you think that's going to be handled then? Well, I don't accept the premise that the opposition is the liberals or the, the systemic opposition which Mr. Nemtsov represented. You are ignoring, the Western press ignores totally, the genuine opposition in Russia, which was called the, the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, which garnered 17 percent of the vote in the 2012 presidential election when Mr. Nemtsov and his colleagues were the one percenters. Okay, okay but I think, I think you're, dodging, you're dodging the question. No, I mean, it's, a, couldn't, it's couldn't directly. This create a climate of fear, as many have talked about. Uh, Marsha Gibson had an article I, in the New York Times think, about that yesterday, yes. I think yeah. uh, that uh, this uh, Kremlin opposition parties, which uh, my neighbor is talking to, is not the opposition. The opposition has no chance to go elections, uh, they have limited resources, they cannot get a state uh, television, and they are under pressure so that people are afraid. Okay. And they're all even not allowed to run in election in very often. Right. Okay. So from Europe, we're criticizing this. How should Europe respond? Fraser. We have to support the forces that are actually trying to pursue a more liberal, democratic Russia based on the rule of law. That's in our interest. 
Okay. Uh, Gilbert, do you yes, think there should easy, be any easy. change of your, e European policy? Uh, or European I guess policy has changed dramatically, 180 degrees, for, uh, in the last 14 months. So the change has come, and the change has satisfied exactly the calls that Mr. Nemtsov made back in 2010 when I heard him in New York, calling for very wide sanctions against the whole political class uh, around, around the Kremlin and in the countryside. But he, we cast him as a loser. He won what he wanted, and we are all losers. But one could, one could argue that sanctions up to now have really done little. Why? I impose more sanctions, or what should the EU reaction be, Elmar? It must be made very clear that Russia has broken international law by attacking another independent country. Therefore, we do sanctions to make it clear that these attacks are too expensive, and we have to say that within Russia there is an atmosphere which is anti-democratic, right. against parliaments, against the rights of the individuals, and this is not acceptable. But if there is any link established, official link, to this murder, do you think there should be some EU reaction through sanctions or other? I mean, the Raise sanctions it. should be extended to cover all members of the Duma, all members of the security forces, all members of the ruling. You're talking elite. over Ukraine, or you're talking over this slaying? Both. I mean, in terms of Ukraine, I mean, as Mr. Brock said, this is a question of a complete breach of international law. You have to have sanctions. Mr. Brock? The Putin system is against the economic and social interests of its own people, and it's against human rights. But is Mr. Putin really in control here? Some might argue that this was beyond his control, it happened beyond his control. What do you think, Mr. Uh, Gilbert? Well, the, the, Mr. Putin and Russia are conflated in the Western press and in the Western mind. That's very unfortunate because Russia is a country of 40, 142 million people, a very complex society with a lot of forces that are not just outside Mr. Putin's control, but are an open society. He has like a political him. machine though, doesn't he? And, and how far does that reach? Oh, he has a very effective political machine and the main impact of that machine was to defeat the people whom we otherwise would have liked defeated, the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, which in 1996 had 40% of the popular talking, vote and now had 17. You, he has succeeded. Talking Communist Party, but what about the rest of the opposition? Fraser. Well, <clears throat> he simply has not allowed any space for other parties to operate. I mean, even in the last elections, if he had allowed the opposition parties to run with a reasonable amount of media time, he probably would still have won. But he didn't. He didn't want to trust the voters, and therefore you got all the demonstrations after he fiddled the elections. Elmar. Putin should give the same rights to the liberal Democrats, to the people who want a real transparent democracy, as he does give to the Communist Party. So, so, what, so, so what, what should he do now in, in light of the Nemtsov slang to show that he's uh, trying to allow a free opposition? He should allow free media. Free media, and that means also that opposition has its fair share in public uh, uh, TV, for example. Gilbert. There's more free media in Russia on the question of Ukraine than there is in the United States on relations with Russia. My God, what a lie. Uh, uh, Elmar? Uh, it's, it's incredible to say that there is more freedom in media in Russia than the United States. My God, you must be very no, well was, paid by the Russians. I was very specific on the uh, Russian question uh, and the Ukrainian question. Uh, and do you read the Russian media? I don't believe you do. I well, do. Let, I let, do let, let's hear from Fraser. What do you think? Well, I mean, today the Russians have simply banned a whole number of prominent Europeans wanting to go to the funeral in Moscow. So it's a clear indication that even at a time of personal tragedy, Russia still operates like this. Okay, and then but another question is, some people say, well, we have to be careful about putting pressure on Russia because we might destabilize it or destabilize it further. What do you think, Mr. Brock? I don't know how you can stabilize, destabilize an autocratic system. This autocratic system has created an atmosphere of pressure which makes it possible that such assassinations can hap happen and therefore they should give free room for democracy. Gilbert. Uh, Mr. Brock may be amazed, but I support the position of your Chancellor. Because the option is not between more sanctions and less sanctions. The option is between sanctions and military intervention. Fortunately, your Chancellor understood that well and went to Minsk. You mix it up. We didn't talk about Ukraine. We talked about the internal situation in Russia. For, for and here Fraser, we agree. How, how do we bridge not that divide, you. Fraser? <clears throat> how do we bridge we that? We don't bridge the divide because it's unbridgeable. You're dealing with a system here that um, simply distorts the complete democratic process on which the European Union is based. And we cannot destroy or go against our values. We simply have to wait and play the long game until the system is changed in Russia.
Thanks, Fraser. We're out of time. I'd like to thank all of our guests, Elmar Brock, Gilbert, Dr. Rowe, and Fraser Cameron. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.